Hey guys, welcome back to Bullet Creek. I recently ran across the linear compensator that was advertised for $13 on GunBroker. And linear compensators that I have generally ran between $35 to $65. And of course, anytime I see something that's a lot less expensive than most of the other products in that same category, I always suspect that it's probably a cheap Chinese knockoff with inferior materials and inferior craftsmanship. But it caught my eye, and so I looked at it a little bit closer, and as I read, I found out that these compensators were made in Kentucky. They were U.S.-made, U.S.-designed linear compensators, and they were selling for $13. They were steel, they were nitride, and the company was called Fully Loaded. So today, what I'd like to do is take a close look at these fully loaded linear compensators and then compare some other compensators that I've collected over the years. These are the two fully loaded brand linear compensators that I've uh, just recently purchased. One is a 30 caliber and the other is a 22 caliber. They are made with steel. They're manufactured in the United States, in Kentucky, and they have a nitride finish. These compensators routinely sell for $15, but I found them on sale for $13. And when I went to the website to look at what other fully loaded products there were, I found that they had stainless steel linear compensators. The stainless steel compensators are usually $20. And they were actually on sale at the time of me looking for $15. So $15 for stainless steel and 13 for the steel nitride finished in either 22 caliber or 30 caliber. So I want to talk a little bit about linear compensators. Linear compensators uh, have been around for a while. The first linear compensator that I became aware of was this Levang, L-E-V-A-N-G. This is a Levang compensator. Now, the primary function of a linear compensator is to direct the blast forward. So it moderates the blast and then directs it forward so that the perceived sound for the shooter is diminished. The general design for the Levang is a cylindrical expansion chamber. And then you can see the primary hole in the center is for the projectile. And then they have circumferential peripheral holes that direct the blast forward and slightly laterally. The idea is that it makes the weapon sound quieter. There is at least theoretically a mild reduction in the recoil since you're moderating the blast a little bit and spreading out the blast, but it really isn't a major recoil reducer. Now, since the Levang, a lot of other companies have come out with their own designs of linear compensators. And over the years, I have tried and like uh, several different ones. I'd like to just review those with you. The ones that I have used, this is a Call Valley KAW. So this is Call Valley Precision. And I don't know if you can appreciate this. It, it has the flutes on the side. It has the single expansion chamber. The same kind of arrangement on the muzzle end. With the small peripheral holes. And then the primary hole in the center. Now one difference is just style. And you really can't appreciate it that much. See if I can maybe light this up with a flashlight. But inside, um, this is unfortunately hidden by the handguard but there is a taper toward the rear of this linear compensator and so the call valley works very well it it directs all the blast forward the 556 five, really doesn't have much recoil so that's never really been a big issue for me so this is call valley pre uh, precision i have uh, bought some Black River Tactical linear compensators. This is a Black River Tactical. The dimensions on the outside of this mimic a standard A2. So if you have, for example, a halo uh, suppressor from Gemtech, uh, you can put the halo over this. So this has external dimensions consistent with uh, standard A2. 
and it has some design differences that I don't know if we can really point out but we'll try if we look at the inside you see that rather than having the holes all on the very muzzle end of this device that the expansion chamber is actually small and really is only in this part of the device so it has a relatively small expansion chamber and then the the peripheral ports to direct the blast are more like grooves they do have little holes but there's a groove directing the blast and this may have something to do with its ability to uh, suppress flash a little bit more than the standard linear compensator so this is black river tactical i like the way it looks i like that i can use my halo suppressor with it Another brand that I, I really like the looks of, this is the Troy. They call it their Claymore, which makes sense since a Claymore directs blast in one direction. And you can see uh, inside, you have the blast chamber and then the typical arrangement for a linear compensator. And these all work very well. When I saw these fully loaded brand, I was, I was really intrigued and was interested in what kind of quality we would find when we ordered these. I like the style. It has these uh, flutes. It has the typical large expansion chamber with all of the ports pretty close to the muzzle end of the device. And the price is just incredible. I mean, picking these up for $13 to $15 and then the stainless steels for 15 to 20 dollars is is really a bargain and uh, and they appear to be very well made good quality steel nitride finish so i have to say i am as impressed with the quality of this fully loaded linear compensator as i am impressed with the very low price these fully loaded linear compensators are a real value given the price point and the quality of these US made products. I'm so impressed with these linear compensators that I'll put a link up to the fully loaded website so if you want to go and look at these you can. I've been using this 30 caliber fully loaded linear compensator on my 300 blackout pistol and it's worked as expected. It directs the blast forward and it provides a little compensation. I think for the price point of $15 to $13 for a USA made linear compensator, this is really a good value. If you're interested in looking into one of these for yourself, you can click on the link that I've included in the comments below this video. If you have any questions or comments, post those, and I'll try to respond to those as soon as possible. If you like what you're seeing on my YouTube channel, please consider going to my Patreon page, which is also linked on this video, and just making a small pledge of a buck or two a month. It would certainly help keep my video channel going. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.